Hey guys, so a couple of real quick and dirty tests for you today. We're going to do a stabilization test between the GoPro Hero 9 and the iPhone 12. I'm going to try on a bike, walking, and then a bit of a vlogging test. Then I'm going to do a very quick vlogging test between the iPhone 12 and the GoPro Hero 9. And then a slightly longer vlogging test with the iPhone 12 with a couple of hints and tips thrown in. So let's get into it. To be perfectly honest with you, even the iPhone stabilization is pretty good, but it's never going to match the GoPro, especially with Horizon leveling on. So given that, the iPhone does a pretty good job. In this one I think the iPhone does a lot better than the previous test. Of course if you're filming something cinematic with your iPhone you probably want to do it in a higher frame rate so you can create slow motion or use a gimbal. So uh, there is quite a bit of a breeze up so the sound's probably not going to be great. Uh, I'll find another location but this is just basically walking, talking, speaking to the camera I haven't got my arm fully stretched out. It's probably a, look at this arm. It's probably like that far out. That looks weird, doesn't it? Um, yeah, just walking along, talking to the camera. Um, let me get my bike, and we'll just wheel it and try and find another location that's uh, not quite so windy. Behind this bush looks good. That sounds dodgy as. Okay, so here's just a vlogging test. Let me stand up. Let me sit on my bike a bit easier. Alrighty, so just a basic uh, vlogging test. I've got the iPhone just on its native camera app. Uh, sometimes when I've used an iPhone for filming things, I've put it on Filmic Pro and use that. And uh, that way you can adjust things like aperture, uh, frame rate, focus, all that sort of thing. But this is just in the native camera app. Um, I'm using the rear camera, so I'm not exactly sure whether I'm in frame or not, um, as opposed to using the selfie camera. Um, often when I'm vlogging with an iPhone, I will use the selfie camera, um, but depends on the iPhone you've got. In the latest iPhone 12, they've uh, updated the selfie camera, so it's a real good picture. Uh, whereas in some of the earlier iPhones, you know, it was a bit mama hoo hoo or a bit janky, or not so flash, or a bit rubbish. So, can you use your iPhone for vlogging? Absolutely. Can you use your GoPro for vlogging? Absolutely. In fact, many of my very early videos were just using a GoPro Hero 5 session, just holding it out in front of me, and it did a perfectly fine job. And then uh, some of my more recent ones, particularly while traveling, just on an iPhone. And you know, the cameras on these are so good these days, the microphones are pretty good. Um, you know, it's actually pretty hard to tell the difference. And the stabilization as well is uh, pretty amazing. And also remember that Mr. Beast's first, I don't know, 100 something, 100 videos, 100,000 subscribers, 100 million dollars, I don't know. But his first 100 something were done on an iPhone 5. Uh, so if it's good enough for Mr. Beast, it's good enough for us to use an iPhone 10, 11, 12, whatever, absolutely fine. Uh, plus it's, it's that much more portable, you've pretty much always got it in your pocket and it's always ready to turn on and just record a little bit of where you are. Even if you just use it for supplementary footage, using your iPhone just for some b-roll or just some quick commentary, anything like that, super easy and let's be honest it's super good quality. So absolutely you can use it as a vlogging camera. So that was a real quick and dirty stabilization test between the iPhone uh, 12 and the GoPro Hero 9. Look. I think the stabilization in the in the iPhone has come a long way in the last few years, but to be honest, you're not gonna beat the GoPro, especially now with uh, HyperSmooth 3 and Horizon leveling. It's always gonna be smoother.
see what I mean? iPhone 12, can't beat it. Just got to set up on a little GoPro shorty tripod and uh, away you go. So, super easy vlogging setup, couldn't really get much easier. At the moment I'm using the selfie camera, I'm using the front facing camera and um, I think the quality looks really good. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like when I get it onto, uh, onto the computer. But uh, actually, you know, for just quick inserts or additional footage into your into your main video or commentary or anything like that, I don't reckon you can beat it. I'm clearly filming something, right? Couldn't keep it to themselves. Far out. Okay, so now just switching it around, I'm on the rear-facing camera. So I'm not sure if you can tell any quality difference between this and the front-facing camera. Still think it looks pretty good. The only difficulty is I'm not sure how much of you are in frame. I know it's relatively wide, so I should be okay, but it's a little bit hard to tell. So once I compare the quality on the computer, if there's no major quality loss between the front and the rear-facing camera for just quick talking pieces like this, I think I'll go with the front facing camera every time. That way it makes it much easier to frame up and make sure uh, you haven't got um, half your head cut off, you know, like this. I wonder what the zoom's like. Some people here throwing little planes around in the wind. Let's have a look. So that's the wide, that's normal, and three times Why is it over? bit of an unplanned action shot there <sighs> makes for amazing content Pretty good content day. Oh. To be honest, there are so many grips and mounts and ways to mount your phone that you can use it pretty much anywhere at any time. There's no real excuse. There is one thing though yeah, you've really got to watch out for. sorted had to make a bit of a mercy dash now as I said there is one thing when vlogging with an iPhone that you've got to take into account and that was sound okay now if you're vlogging outside you're likely to get some wind noise which is a bit of a pain in the bum inside not usually a problem unless you've got something noisy going on like a noisy fridge or an air conditioner or something like that but outside it can be a bit of an issue so there are a couple of options if you've got a clamp for your phone that has a cold shoe on the top you could insert Oh, look at this, look at this. Something moving up there. And that is... Okay. Ah, there you are. Hello. What are you doing up there? What are you doing up there? Come on then. You're a bit cheeky, aren't you? You're a bit cheeky. So that's my cheeky chops neighbor's cat. So if you've got a grip or a clamp for your phone that has a cold shoe on top, you can use an external microphone as long as you've got the right connector for your phone. The other thing is to use a wireless microphone like a Rode Wireless Go, works really, really well. Or this little puppy that I'm using at the moment called the Instamic. Now, the beauty of this little puppy is you can um, hide it under your shirt. It comes with a little holder and a little magnet. Well, pretty strong. So what you can do is pop it under your shirt, magnet on the outside, Bob's your uncle. The good thing is too, you can control it by your iPhone. Basically an on and off function and some basic settings. If you are using something like Filmic Pro, however, to do your videos, you can connect this wirelessly to your iPhone and it will sync up with Filmic Pro and you don't have to do any post-production um, synchronization afterwards. Whereas if I wear this separately and record it separately, I do have to sync it with the iPhone footage. Not a major drama in programs like Premiere and Final Cut Pro when you can sync audio and video pretty easily. Um, however, it is another step that you have to put into your workflow. But it is good for outside windy conditions. The other beauty of this thing is that you can wear it 
and stand quite some distance from the camera. In fact, let's give that a go. Okay, so just a uh, rough and ready. Okay, so just a uh, rough and ready little test. I'm probably standing about six feet from the microphone. I mean the iPhone. Now I'm down here. Now I'm probably about 30 feet away from it. You can do these uh, very cool documentary style uh, talking to the camera then you get right up into your proper spot and away you go. Looking, uh, looking like the business. The other thing is if you're filming in a static location and you can set up the microphone beforehand then you can put it in very sneaky situations because you've been looking at me you haven't been looking at this here's the microphone amazing got a little magnet on it i could probably position it up a little bit higher the other thing is if you know you're going to be filming in a particular location you could put the microphone somewhere close before you do that so most of you are probably looking at my face some of you are going where the hell is he sitting not many of you though would have picked up that that's the microphone right there. That's the microphone right there. Now it's perfect for things like weddings, not that you're gonna be filming a wedding with your iPhone, or well, you might do, but you can put that up by the altar, and pick out the bride and groom. Okay, so that's a weird example, but you get what I mean. A very handy little thing. So that's the upshoot really, a real quick and dirty stabilization comparison between the iPhone 12 and the GoPro Hero 9, and also a quick and dirty vlogging test with the GoPro Hero 9 and mainly the iPhone. Give you an idea of the sorts of things you can use both devices for. If you want to see an interesting stabilization test, I did a stabilization test between the new GoPro Hero 9 Black and the Insta360 Go. Check out the video here. Thanks guys, we'll catch you in the next one.